because he understood that the conditions didn't change what he believed in. He understood that regardless of what was going around, what was going on around him, that there was something in him that was greater. And I come to tell you today that greater is he that's in you than anything that's in this world. And when you know that you got the peace of God on the inside of you, you can go to sleep in the midst of trouble. I'm gonna be crushed. Can you imagine the stress of having to live looking over your back? Can you imagine the stress that Paul had to endure? That he had knowing that people were trying to take him out every time? But Paul said... Notice that all the time the angel is talking to Peter. Watch this. Notice all this time he's giving Peter direction. But notice Peter never asked the angel any questions. Oh, come on, somebody. He never asked him any questions. He never said, well, why I got to put my shoes on? Or why I got to go and do this? Or how we going to get through the gate? Right, what, what the street look like? What if they on the outside waiting with guns to shoot us? What if Herod coming? about what you got to face down the road I just need you to be obedient and follow me see many of us worry about things that we we haven't even got through yet see sometimes we worry months and years what if what if what if this happened you ain't even got to it yet obedient and follow me see many of us worry about things that we we haven't even got through yet sometimes you're gonna find yourself between a rock and a hard place how many of you've been in between a rock and a hard place you've been in situations that you couldn't see no way out you didn't understand how God was gonna do it but he says be encouraged because God's gonna still get you out of it God's gonna move
but it's truly about Jesus. Hallelujah. It is truly about Jesus on this morning. Hallelujah, Lord God. Allow your Holy Spirit, Lord God, to reign in Hosanna Church on this morning, Lord God. Allow your, your spirit, Lord God, to flow through our minds, Lord God. Allow your spirit, Lord God, to be in our joy, Lord God. Allow your spirit, Lord God, to be in our mindset on today, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Let everything we do at Hosanna Church, hallelujah, everything we do at Hosanna Church be filled with your Holy Spirit and your glory and your joy, Lord God. Good morning, hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Hosanna Church on this morning. Hallelujah. We are a church where the unchurched would love to attend and experience God personally. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, y'all. It's amazing to be alive on this morning. Hallelujah. It's amazing to breathe on this morning. Hallelujah. We take nothing, nothing for granted, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise God for being our only God. We praise God for being our only God. Hallelujah. Our worship scripture on this morning will come from Isaiah 45, 5 and 6. That's Isaiah 45, 5 and 6. I am the Lord and there is no other. There is no God besides me. I will gird you though you have not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, is, that was Isaiah 45, 5 and 6. Hallelujah, Lord God. God, you are our only Lord and Savior, Lord God. Hallelujah. Forgive us, Lord God, for the times that we didn't put you first in our lives, Lord God. Lord God, at times we may have put our children first, Lord God, our jobs first, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we want to ask you on this morning, Lord God, to forgive us, Lord God, for not making you first in our lives, Lord God, and realizing, Lord God, that you are our source, Lord God, that you are our comforter, Lord God, that you are the almighty, Lord God, and that you are our peace, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God, for anything, Lord God, that we have done this week, Lord God, that was unpleasing in your sight, Lord God. Forgive us right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, and create in us a clean heart, Lord God, and renew Renew the right spirit within us on this morning, Lord God. Lord God, we just praise and worship you on this morning, Lord God. We give you the glory and we give you the honor, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done and allowed in our life, Lord God. We thank you for reminding us, Lord God, of how much, Lord God, you mean to us, Lord God. Not the things that you do for us, Lord God, but how much you mean to us, Lord God. Your character, love, your character, Lord God, of love, Lord God. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Thank you right now, Lord God. We rely on your presence, Lord God, on this morning, Lord God. Hallelujah. Your presence, Lord God. Your presence, Lord God. Hallelujah. We invite your Holy Spirit at Hosanna Church on this morning, Lord God. Every single day, Lord God, we need your presence, Lord God. We need to feel you, Lord God, like never before, Lord God. We need to honor you like never before, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Allow your spirit to lead us, Lord God. Lead us on today, Lord God. Hallelujah. We don't want to do anything, Lord God, in our own fashion, Lord God. But we want to be ordered by you, Lord God. Every step that we make, Lord God, will be ordered by you, Lord God. When you see our faces at Hosanna, Lord God, we want the people to see you, Lord God. We want the people to honor you, Lord God. Not ourselves, Lord God. But we die to us on today, Lord God, to allow your Holy Spirit to reign, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We may be the only Jesus that people see, Lord God. Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We want it, Lord. We want them to see you, Lord God, like never before, Lord God. In your joy, Lord God, in your fashion, Lord God, of love, Lord God. Hallelujah. We worship you on today and give you the glory, Lord God. Keep us, Lord God, from the snares and the fowlers of the enemies, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for and whisper in our ear, Lord God. Hallelujah. Whisper in our ear, Lord God, when we need to run, Lord God. When we need to listen, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God, that we may be able to obey, Lord God, your word, Lord God, your spirit, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Guide us right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. 
Lord God, our hearts, Lord God. There may be someone hurting on this morning, Lord God. But we know, Lord God, that after they watch this service, Lord God, we know as we go through this service, Lord God, that you will mend every heart that's broken, Lord God. We know right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that we will cry after you, Lord God. Because our help comes from you, Lord God. Our help come from you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. So we came on this morning, Lord God, with expectations in our hearts, Lord God, that you will do it, Lord God, and that you will fix it, Lord God. We know right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you are the only one, the only true living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We come to praise him on this morning. We come to give him the glory. We come to give him the praise. Hallelujah. As you meet and greet each other on today, Lord. Hallelujah. Let us feel your love. Let us feel your presence, Lord God, in your honor, Lord God. Hallelujah. At this time, you can meet and greet your neighbor, whether it is at home or whether it is here at Hosanna Church. Give each other a little elbow, a smile to let everybody know that we are grateful to be here on this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Following the meet and greet, we will have a praise team of Hosanna Church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all ready to worship on today? Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, Hosanna, stand on your feet. Let's worship the Father. How many know that we serve a good God? Oh, y'all, I want y'all to make the biggest, loudest noise for Jesus. Hallelujah, God, we give you glory. God, we love you. God, we bless you. God, we thank you. God, there's nobody like you. God, there's nobody that compares to you. I'll start. You finish. You finish. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Turn my mic up or turn the monitor up for me. Hallelujah. Listen. We love to call your name in something. We could not explain that happened when we proclaim your great name, your great name. Yeah. We, love we love to call your name. Call your name. It's, something. it's something we could not explain not that, happened that happened when we proclaim, when we proclaim your great name.
break the walls in this place. Let's break down strongholds in the name of Jesus. Hey, say when I call your name. Say when I call your name. Say when I call your name. When I call your name. I get deliverance when I call. I get my breakthrough when I call. I'm stronger when I call. noise in this place we give you glory Jesus come on come on Hosanna this is not a performance this is not a show but this is our time to worship the Father God you're worthy God we bless you God there's no one like you Jesus when we think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for us. All I got to do is inhale and exhale. That's a blessing right there. If I got the activity of my limbs, that's a blessing right there. When I think of his faithfulness and how he's kept us all day and all week long, that's a blessing right there. God, you are so holy. God, you are a good God. And we bless your name, Jesus. All over the building, if y'all don't mind, just lifting up your hands. And say something to Jesus. This is our opportunity and time to worship him. To give him his due praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. This song says this. Our Father... You are holy, we give you glory, and we bless your name, our Father. You are holy, we give you glory, and we bless your name, our Father. You are, you are holy. We give you glory, God. We give you glory. And we bless your name. And we bless your Come on, say, Our Father. Our Father. You are holy, Jesus. You are holy. We give you glory, God. We give you glory. And we bless your name, God. Come on, you say it. You say it. Our Father. Our Father. Our Father. You are holy, Jesus. You are holy. We give you glory. We give you glory. And we bless your name, God. One more time right there. Say, our Father. Our Father. You are holy. You are holy. We give you glory. We give you glory. And we bless. And we're going to take it up right there. Come on, help me say our Father, our Father, you are holy. We give you glory. And we bless your name, Jesus. There's no one like you, God, our Father. You are so holy. Yeah. We give you We give you glory. Come on, take it up again. Your name, our Father, you are holy. Yeah. We give you and we bless. There's no one like you, Jesus. You are so holy. We give and we bless. Come on, we're going to take it up again. Come So good, Jesus. There's no one compares to you. And we bless. And we bless. Oh, our Father. Oh, God, you are holy. We give you glory. And we bless. We're going to 
Keep on blessing the Lord. Come on and give him a praise. Amen. Our Father, he is holy. Glory to your name. Amen. God is such a good God. Amen. We come to the point of our service. Amen. Where we just want to bless the Lord. The, the scripture that the Lord put in my spirit was Philippians 419, lady. Yeah. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, if you haven't received your need yet, just wait on God. He's always on time. Amen. Come on, get God for our, uh, for our, our, our audience, our, our online audience, Hosanna. Thank God for you, Hosanna. Amen. We, we, in, we in the church of God today right now in Hosanna Church. And we, I, I'm excited, y'all. And I'm glad because you know what happened? God made all my needs. He took, he took care of all my needs this week. So I'm happy to give to him today. I'm happy to reach down, down and pull out something and give to the Lord. Amen. If he give to my spiritual needs, I can give to him. He can give to my natural needs. I can give to the spiritual needs. And the spiritual needs is that Hosanna always reach out. If you follow us, we reach out to people, amen, in the community. And talking about needs which the Lord put in my spirit, we try our best by the leading of the Lord to meet the needs of those that's less fortunate Amen. Come on, you ought to be glad about that. Because, amen, we are in church, but we are unwalled church. We go out into the community. Hey, yes, we do, don't we? I can't, I can't hear nobody. Don't we go out into the community, amen? Hallelujah. And show love to the people. I want to I wanted, uh, let you know, you already know, some of you know online, and you already know here, that we have four ways to give. The first is uh, the tithe. Amen. Easy tie. Let me say that right. You can download that on your phone. The next one, amen, is the cash amp, dollar sign, Hosanna Church SAV. One more time. Cash amp, dollar sign, Hosanna Church SAV. And then text to give, 478-253-8866. One more time, 478-253. 8866, and right here in the sanctuary, amen, we have baskets to your left and your right. Amen. Be happy about giving. The, the word of God said, God loves a, I can't hear you, Hosanna. God loves a, one more time. Give a, amen. At this time, go, you can go ahead and give. We're going to get some. 
giving music, amen. And then I'm going to pray, amen, after you give your tithes or offering. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, God, for this offering that you have, we have given, God, we pray that this offering be used right now, Father, Father, God, for the saving of souls and the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, come and give God a hand of praise one more time. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 To God be the glory. I hope you are sold your seeds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we never know. We never know. We never, never know what God can do for us. Hallelujah. But most of all, it's just who he is. Hallelujah. And not what he can do for us. I have a few announcements on this morning. Hallelujah. Those who are interested in our special Resurrection Sunday, please see Lady Gunn after service on today for some brief details, okay? Again, if you are interested in Resurrection Sunday, um, doing anything for Resurrection Sunday, please see Lady Gunn right after service, okay? So you can get a, few, a little bit of details, all right? Hallelujah. Our ocean baptism. Can y'all say ocean baptism? Ocean baptism at Tybee Ocean. Baptism at Tybee Island will be March 28th at 1 o'clock p.m. We will meet at the Tybee Pier, at the pier. We will meet at the pier. Again, that's at 1 o'clock p.m. Are you guys excited about that? I am excited about the ocean baptism. I have never been to one, so I am extremely excited. Hallelujah. And at Hosanna, we have that opportunity, and I praise God for that. How many of you enjoyed our first Wednesday night? Bible study on how, how to study the Bible. Were you guys excited about that? I was, and he met the need of every learner of the Bible. Hallelujah. I praise God for that. So that will continue this week at 6.30, and every Wednesday at 6.30 for this month, we will have that study on how to study the Bible. Thank you, Pastor. We appreciate you for that. Hallelujah. Every second Tuesday at Hosanna Church, the Love Again Initiative will um, host anxiety support group. We will have um, communion directly after this. Hallelujah. We'll have another song. <laughs> Hallelujah. We'll have another worship song after that, and we will definitely have communion on today. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just lift our hands to worship the Father? All of our needs, he's already supplied according to his riches and glory. There's nothing that he withholds from us. Amen. The Bible says to cast your cares upon the Lord and he will care for you or he will sustain you. And how many just trust in God's sustaining power? Before we go any further in the service, let's just open our hearts and minds to receive from him. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Let's show them some love. Come on. A blessing from you. Come on, Faith. Let's sing it. My hands are lifted up. My heart is ready to be seen. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. Come on, everybody, help us say that. Come on, say. My hands are lifted. My hands are lifted up. My heart is ready. My heart is ready to read. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. Oh, oh, oh. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. Oh, my hands, my hands are lifted up. My heart is ready to. My heart is ready to read. Come on, Hosanna, say that. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. Lord, make it rich and add no sorrow to it. A blessing. A blessing from you. Oh, we're going to say this. Say, break me, shake me, break me, shake, mold me, mold me, use me, use me. My heart is ready to receive a blessing from you. Oh God, we need you, Jesus, a blessing from you. A blessing from you. you to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's worship the Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. How many of you really need a blessing from the Lord? I don't know about you, but regardless of how good God has been in my life i need a fresh blessing amen i need a brand new blessing amen come on can we just take the time to worship the lord amen come on i need everyone standing right now we're gonna we have to prepare the way for the service tonight this morning 
And come on, let's give God praise for this praise team. Hallelujah. We bless God for these college students. Amen. And we love all college students. We got two Georgia Southern students. And we got two Savannah State students. Amen. But together, don't they sound good? Amen. And I can't forget about my drum over here. Hallelujah. Let's give honor to them amen this morning we bless the name of the lord this is the day that the lord has made and i believe that god has something special for you on today but even as we begin to move in the word of god we want to go ahead and take communion now so ask that elder will get us prepared this morning for communion and i have a high expectation um this morning how many come with your expectation Amen. You have an expectation for God to do something today, for him to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that He will, that we could ask or think of him to do. And right, what, right before we take communion, I want to share on yesterday, uh, God really began to move here uh, at Hosanna Church. I've been telling you guys since last year uh, that the Lord really pressed upon, upon me that we have to keep these doors open. And any time that we open the doors, we're going to experience the harvest. And my vision for Hosanna Church is not just to be a church on Sunday and Wednesday, but God placed us right here in the mall. And I want to be open just like all the other stores are open. Amen. Because I believe that we have to come in contact with the harvest. In order for us to do that, I need your help. I need you guys to come down here some days and just open the doors and let people come in. And so on yesterday while the praise team was here rehearsing uh there was a family that came from douglas georgia they just walked in and sat down and they were just sat down in the back and they were just enjoying uh the worship and uh the gentleman he came up to us and he says man this is the spirit of the lord is in this place and he asked me to pray for him and as we began to praying for him the lord filled them with the holy spirit right here in this sanctuary Amen. The Holy Spirit fell upon him. And we bless God for that. And Lady Gunn later told me that there were other people coming. Amen. They were just sitting in. Amen. Making a contact to us. And I don't know if they're going to come back on a Sunday or not. But the very fact that they could make that contact with them. Amen. And we just, we just thank God and celebrate what he's doing in the church. And so we believe that God's going to continue to meet us at this place. Give me a little bit more of my mic. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, come forth, Elder, come forth with the communion this morning. Uh, this is our first Sunday, and we partake of the Lord's Supper. There are two ordinances that the Lord left the church. One is baptism, which we do, uh, we will do on March the 28th. And I'm asking everybody, even if you're not, if you just want to be baptized again, come on. We're going to do it right there at Tybee. And the other one is communion, which we take every first Sunday here. And with communion, we, we symbolize and we recognize Christ's death. We recognize the shedding of his blood. Scripture tells us that as often as we eat and drink of his blood, in order that we eat and drink of his body, we do it in remembrance of him. The blood symbolizes I mean, the cup. The wine it symbolizes the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the bread is symbolic of the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we should do it with a pure conscience and a pure heart. So even right now, before we pray, I want you to search your heart. And if there's anything in your heart that should not be, just repent of it. Ask the Lord to remove it away from you if there's any unforgiveness any sin in your life ask the Lord to help you and he will help you he will send his Holy Spirit to bring change in your life so father this morning as we come to partake of your butt of your body and your shed blood we thank you for what you've done for us we thank you for the sacrificial death that you died on Calvary, oh God. And we believe today that your blood, that it still has power. 
It has saving power, oh God. And we thank you for saving us. Father God, we pray the prayer of David. We ask that you create in us a clean heart and renew in us a right spirit. That you wash us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Father, we repent of our sins. We ask for your forgiveness. For your word says that if we're faithful and just to pronounce our sins, that you will forgive us. Father, as we partake of your body today, we do this in remembrance of you. And we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. Amen. I want you to remain standing with your hands cupped. An elder's going to come at this time. And he's going to serve you. Let us lift the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Let us all eat and drink. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Let us all drink. Amen. Can we give God praise and thanks for communion this morning? Hallelujah. While you're standing, let's go ahead and go to 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter number 13. 2 Kings chapter 13. There's a word from the from our Lord this day. Those of you that are interested in baptism immediately after service, please sign up with me so that we can make sure that you're accounted for. Second Kings chapter number 13, beginning at verse number 14 through 19. Thank y'all for participating in the 
how to study the Bible. Excited about it for Wednesday night. So I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, 2 Kings 13, beginning at verse 14. The word of the Lord says, when Elisha was in his last illness, King Joash of Israel visited him and wept over him saying, My father, my father, I see the chariots and the charioteers of Israel, he cried. Elijah told him, Get a bow and some arrows. And the king did as he was told. Elijah told him, Put your hand on the bow. And Elijah laid his hands on the king's hands. Then he commanded, open the eastern window, and he opened it. Then he said, shoot. So he shot an arrow. Somebody said, shoot your shot. Elijah proclaimed, this is the Lord's arrow, an arrow of victory over Aram, which is, which is Syria, for you will completely conquer the, uh, the Arameans at Apac. And then he said, now pick up the other arrows and strike them against the ground. So the king picked them up and struck the ground three times. But watch this. But the man of God, the prophet Elijah, was angry with him. He said, you should have struck the ground five or six times. He explained, then you would have beaten Aram until it was entirely destroyed. Now you will be victorious only three times. Somebody say three times. Amen. You may be seated. As you head to your seat, I want to talk to you from the thought, don't shortchange yourself. I'll say that again. Don't shortchange yourself. It's one thing for other people to shortchange us. And what I mean by this word shortchange is simply giving you less than what you are expected to receive. It's one thing when other people try to shortchange us, whether it's through the daily dealings of life, whether it's through business dealings, whether it's through our commitment and loyalty to certain things. It's one thing when other people tries to shortchange. Anybody been shortchanged before or felt as if you were shortchanged? But what's very critical and what's most hurtful is that when we shortchange our own self, so there's something um, that, that is important for us to understand about this word called failure, okay? At any point in your life, if you've lived just a few days, then regardless of how great and how grand and, and how special and anointed and appointed you are, we all have experienced failure at some point in our life, amen? But here's the revelation. If you are a believer... Or God, if you are uh, called by the name of Christ, then you understand that even though I have experienced failure and even though I have failed at certain things in my life, I had to make the declaration that failure is not fatal. Yeah, yeah, just, just because I failed at certain things don't mean that's the end of the story. <laughs> just because I, I didn't achieve the highest ranks of what I thought I should achieve, that doesn't mean that it's over. Because I understand that we serve a God that is so great. We serve a God that is so faithful that sometimes things in our life may seem to be delayed, but that does not mean it is denied. So how many times in life do we fail at things because we keep coming up short? We get all the way to the end of a thing, and it seems like we have victory in our view, but we end up coming up short. 
And I come to declare to about two of you that will believe with me today, maybe five of you or maybe ten of you that will agree with me today, that you ought to declare over your life that today is the last day that I'm going to come up short. Uh, yeah, the la the, you, you, when, just when you get to the end of a thing and you can taste victory on your tongue, but you can't enjoy it. Life has a way dealing with circumstances in our life that we end up coming up short. In these moments, Lady Gun, our victories and all the accomplishments that we make, they seem short-lived. We constantly find ourselves contending in battle with things that we should have overcome by now. Have you ever found yourself still wrestling and still battling with things that you thought you got rid of in first grade? Or maybe you're dealing with some stuff that you thought it, it was over with when you graduated from high school. Or maybe you, you thought that, that that situation would go away when you moved from one job to another. Or maybe you thought it would go away when you got away from your family and all those people with negative talk. But you still see yourself years later battling the same thing over and over again. Come to tell you, people of God, that the enemy, he has one plan, that is to kill, steal, and to destroy. The enemy does not want you to enjoy not one minute of your life. And if he could have had it his way, he would have destroyed you a long time ago. As a matter of fact, some of us, the enemy tried to take you out even before you was born. Your mama, she had problems having you when you was in the womb. The enemy tried to take you out. And then when you got along in grade school, he tried to take you out. But I come to tell you that you serve a God of victory. Godless of the weapon that is formed. The Bible did not promise us that the weapons were not going to form. He just promised us that even though they formed, they wouldn't prosper. And you ought to celebrate the fact that anything that the enemy tried to form against your life, that it did not prosper. Because God had his hand on you. And you can look back over your life. You can look at certain dates or certain birthdays. And you can see that God had his hand on on me <laughs> yeah and it had nothing to do with me it had nothing to do with me but I knew that God had his hand on me so here we are today and our text and our text bring us to a transition point because here we see a great prophet one of the greatest prophets in the Bible if not the greatest prophet in the Bible by the name of Elisha. In the Bible, we can read through 2 Kings, we can read through 1 Kings and in uh, Chronicles. We can find all of the great things that the Lord used the prophet Elijah to do. But here our text brings us to a place where Elijah is on his deathbed. He's coming to the end of his journey. And this is a prophetic moment for him, even though he's in the office of a prophet, because Elijah was a predecessor of, uh, Elisha was a predecessor of his spiritual father, Elijah. And you will read that in 2 Kings chapter number 2, that when uh, his spiritual father, Elijah, got caught up in a chariot. A chariot came and took him up, and, 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 and uh, Elisha caught hold of his mantle. He caught hold of his anointing. And even though the prophet Elijah, I think that he, uh, the prophet Elijah, he, um, he performed over 16 miracles in his time. Elisha, he asked the Lord for a double portion. Amen. So here we see at this moment, at this time, Elisha, Elisha, he has already performed 32 miracles. Amen. So he's, he's at the point where he's about to die, but yet God is still, he, he's still blessing him and he's honoring his word to the prophet. And the last prophetic word that he speaks is a word of victory to this king, Joash. Now, I want to give you some history about this king, 
Joash before we move because, and I don't want you to be critical, okay? I don't want you to look at him sideways because the more I tell you about Joash, hopefully you'll see yourself. See, see, it's hard, it's easy for us to be critical of another person's story until we look at our story. See, it's one thing for me to turn up my nose about your mess and not realize that I still got some mess too. But you know, there are some people that feel like they mess don't stink. That everything they do is good and grand. So Joash, he worshiped God, watch this, outwardly. He would show up with an outward praise. Yeah, Joash reminded me of some people that'll come and tie a church up dancing. They can dance to every beat. And if you look at them long enough, you'll think that they living in heaven with God. That they got a special endowment of anointing, the way their feet move and the way they make the unctions and the dances and all that stuff. But guess what? Even though Joash worshiped God outwardly, he struggled with issues inwardly. Oh, God. Oh, God. And, 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 and when you really get to a point where you understand the things of God, a lot of times, the more you struggle in, inwardly, it's also replication of why you praise so, the way you do on the outside. So some people that got a true praise on the outside is not so much because of the glory of God on their life, but it's because of what they're dealing with on the inside. And while you can sit there and look cute and, and don't mess up your makeup and you just feel comfortable, they can't sit there because they are dealing with so much on the inside of them that they just got to cut loose and give God praise. Yeah. He had inward struggles. One of his inward struggles was he had idol worship. He would worship the golden calves, he would bow down to idols. And we says, oh, man, he's a devil worshiper. He's an idol worshiper. Oh, man, this Joash, he's, some, he's something else. I don't want to deal with anybody like that. I want to stay out from around this type of guy like Joash. But some of us, we worship material things. We serve the God of mammon. You know what the God of mammon is? It is the God of money. Some of us love money, and the Bible teaches us that it's the love of money that's the what? Root to all evil. Some of us, we, we, we are so loyal to, to mammon that we can't wait to play the magic number. We can't wait to get the right slips in our hands because we got to have money. Some of us worship other things, but he had an inward issue. Even though he, he portrayed that he worshiped God on the outside, he had some things going on in the inside. And if we can be real with ourselves this morning, we have to understand and we have to be honest about the fact that we're struggling with some stuff on the inside of us. Amen. But thanks be to God that God can deal with what's on the inside of us. Not only did he worship an idol god, but Joash is what I call he was flaky, which means he only turned to the Lord when he was in trouble. He only turned to the Lord when things seemed to be going wrong. And I don't know about you, but many of us have been like that a season or two in our life. We were so busy being caught up in doing what we wanted to do that we only turned to God when we need a prayer through. We only turned it to God when we need that bill to be paid. We only turned to God when we needed somebody in the family to act right. We only turned to God when things didn't go the way that we Expected to go. So Joash had, he had internal issues. He had idol worship. But here's the most dangerous part of Joash, what he dealt with. He dealt with a divided faith. Can somebody say divided faith? 
What you mean is that his faith wasn't holy in the Lord. It's almost like he had, he tried to have faith in two separate things. His faith was divided. But 2 Kings uh, chapter 13 and 14, it tells us that in spite of all the issues that Joash had, watch this now, Joash made a good decision. <laughs> Come on. In, in, in spite of all the stuff that I've told you about him, somewhere along the line he was able to make one good decision. And I believe that his best decision that he made was he decided to go visit Elijah on his deathbed. He decided to go visit the prophet of God because even though he wasn't devoted to the God of the prophet, he still had enough faith that the prophet of God could, could, could give him an answer to his problem. Amen. And, and you ought to celebrate the fact that when you were going through life's toughest struggles, that you had somebody that was a representation of God that could help give you an answer to unlock the door to your situation. So Joash, he respected the prophet of Elijah greatly, even if he did not honor, watch this, the God of Elijah. Now, I want you to lean in because I, I really want you to understand what I'm about to tell you. People of God, we live in a time today when people honor the prophet of God more than the God of the prophet. Oh, God. I, I think I got to say that again for somebody online so that you can, you can track me here. See, 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 we live in a time where people honor the preacher and what the preacher said more than what God said. Well, I don't see, Pastor, well, what's wrong with that? I don't see that being a problem. Well, here's the problem. The problem is not every prophet or not every preacher of God speaks on behalf of God. That's the problem. And when we get to the point where we honor the man of God or the woman of God or the prophet of God or we run back and forth to get prophetic words, we set ourselves up to be tricked. We set ourselves up to be misled. We set ourselves up to be taken advantage of. So in Joab's situation, I'm glad that he was able to go to Elijah, the man of God, but we have to be careful with that because not every prophet and not every man of God speaks on behalf, on behalf of God. Because you got people that has the title of prophet of God or man of God, and they will tell you exactly what you want to hear if you got enough money in your pocket. If you got enough money in your pocket, I'll tell you your address. I'll tell you the check coming in UPS and how it's coming and what the guy look like that's going to be at your door. You got enough money in your pocket, I'll tell you you're going to be the next prophetess of the nation. You got enough money in your pocket, I'll tell you how God's going to elevate you. And I see elevation and elevation. And God telling you to sit still. And you say, well, that disqualifies me because I ain't got enough money in my pocket. But even if you don't have money, if you got something valuable for them. Oh, gosh, I didn't want to go there. I'm trying to find Lady Girl how I'm going to say this. Oh, gosh. I'm trying to say, help me, Holy Ghost, how I need to say this. But you got people that will tell you what you want to hear as long as your skirt's short enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as your cologne smell good enough, it's sweet enough. Oh, man, and you know what I hit you with? Man of God. Man of God. That's what I hit you with. Yeah, the Lord said, yeah, he did. So we got to be careful about our allegiance to the men and women of God than we are to God. 
Okay, I'm going to go on because y'all ain't ready for that. So Elijah, he sees chariots. Watch this now. Um, the Joash sees these chariots, and he cries out to Elijah. He says, he says to him, my father, my father, I see the chariots and the chariots of Israel. Now, you got to understand the reason that he's coming to Elijah because Joash remembers, watch this, what happened the last time he saw chariots. He remembered that the last time that he saw chariots, Elijah was getting caught up to heaven. See, chariots represents a changing of the guard. Elijah was caught away in a chariot. That means that he was never buried. He never died. The chariot came and caught him up to heaven. And Elijah caught his mantle. So even though Joash, watch this, y'all got to catch it. Even though Joash had issues, even though Joash had struggles, he still could discern the changing of the cards. He still had a level of of spiritual discernment and I come to tell somebody today that God is changing the guard I come to tell you that if you look what's going on in our nation if you look what is happening in our world the reason that we have seen so many of our leaders passing on is because there is a changing of the guard and God is raising up some new leaders. He's raising up some new people that's going to be able to take hold of the anointing and usher this next wave of glory and next and usher these people into the rightful place. And I believe, I believe, I believe, people of God, that God has set us, that he set Hosanna Church. I believe that God has set me to be a new leader that's going to take hold of the new thing God was going to do. The Bible says, behold, I will do a new thing and you, so, you should not know it. So even though Joash was a compromising king, God kept his word with Israel as he promised them that he would deliver them and that he would raise up a deliverer. Joash was a deliverer of Israel. And you got to understand that when he comes to Elijah and he identifies that there's a changing of the guard, Elijah tells him to go get a bow and some arrows. You know, I, I, I ran out of time this morning, but I was going to go to Walmart and buy some bow and arrows just to demonstrate to you guys what I want to show you today. But Elijah says, okay, I understand you, 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 you're, you're thinking that your kingdom is about to fall, but I want you to go get some bow and arrows. And you got to understand that what God does for Joash had really, it really didn't have as much to do with Joash as it had to do with God's people. See, God will make a promise over your life, and there's nothing that people can do that can stop the promise that he's already made over your life. They can set a trap. They can do whatever they want to do, but they ain't going to stop the promise. And listen, I don't care how mixed up, how crazy, how foolish your family is. Your family can't even stop the promise that God's going to have for you. So this is why we should humble ourselves because some victories that you and I have won had very little to do with us. See, you thought you escaped that trouble because you were so smart. You thought you got around with because you were slick and, you know, they weren't going to see it coming. You thought it had something to do with how good you were. But it was only because of the goodness of the Lord and that he is a promise keeper and he'll never make a promise that he will not keep. So we have to humble ourselves. And we have to understand also, looking at Joash, that God can still use you in spite of your issues. 
So Elijah tells him to get these bow and arrow. He tells him to open the window eastward where the army is, where his enemies are. And he puts his hands, come on, that's an anointing right there. He puts his hands on the bow, on top of, he put his hands on Elisha's hand. Uh, Elisha puts his hand on Joash's hand. And when he shot the arrow, it went into the enemy camp. Now, this was a military strategy that when you declare, it was a way to declare war. So he was declaring war to the to the Syrians, the Syrians, he was declaring war to them that it's wartime. But here's what you need to understand. Elisha then gives Joash a prophetic word. And the word that he gave Joash, he promised him that he will be victorious. Watch this. I want you to catch it. If you don't get anything else I say today, get this. He gives him a prophetic word, and his word is go, and you're going to be victorious. You're going to overcome your enemy. I could imagine that Joash probably start shouting. He probably start dancing and bucking. He probably sowed a seed. He probably called his friend and said, oh, yeah, uh, God, God didn't work that out for me. But watch this. Even though the prophet gave him a word, However, how long him and his people would enjoy victory over his enemies would be a matter of Joash's faith. Uh, see, we get so excited about the word that we forget the details. See, you need inspiration, but you also need instruction. See, the inspiration comes from the prophetic word, but the instruction comes from you being able to hear what he's saying and be able to follow that up with faith. So here it is, we see that the matter of how long he would have victory over his enemies was a matter of of his faith. In other words, if you don't sell yourself short, see y'all thought I wasn't coming back there. See, I, 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 set, I set you up. If you don't sell yourself short, some of the enemies, here's the prophetic word for you today. So if you don't sell yourself short, some of the enemies you fight today, you will never have to fight again. Y'all don't know when to shout. I said, if you don't sell yourself short, some of the enemies that you fight today, you will never have to fight again. Maybe y'all didn't catch it, so I got to translate it to you. What I'm trying to say, if you don't sell yourself short, then you'll be able to understand that what I'm saying to you is the struggle it's over. Catch it, catch it, catch it. What do you mean? I'm still struggling because I'm selling myself short. The reason I'm still fighting this thing is because I'm still selling myself short. I don't have enough faith that I need. See, even though Joash had enough sense to go to Elijah, and that was the best decision that he made, Joash was not a man of faith. But he could follow directions. He wasn't a man of faith. I want you to catch this revelation. But he could follow direction. Some people have done a good job camouflaging their lack of faith by just being good at following directions. See, truthfully, you can accomplish a whole lot by just simply following directions. But true miracles come only when you have faith. Elijah told him to get a bow and get an arrow. And then he says, take the arrows and strike them to the ground. 
and when you take the arrows and strike them to the ground, it's going to be symbolic of how long or how powerful or how many times you would subdue your enemy. Watch this. You got to understand this. But faith tells me this. Faith says, I don't have to settle with just doing all right. See, some of us, we just want to be all right. How you doing? I'm doing all right. That ain't good enough for me. How things going? Everything going? It going all right. What's that all right? That's that struggle. That means it, it's not going as best that it could be going, but it, it, it could have been worse. It's all right. Well, well, I, I, I come to tell you that your all right season is over with. Come on, come on. <laughs> Why settle for all right when God wants to give you what's best? Uh, come on. But if you keep selling yourself short, you're going to settle for a lifestyle of all right. You 20 years old, how you doing? All right. You 40, how you doing? All right. You 65, how you doing? All right. Why settle for a lifestyle of just doing all right and being all right and when God wants to give you what's best? And the only difference is that we keep selling ourselves short. So we settle with just being all right. Faith tells me that my God will do exceedingly. <laughs> uh, you, you don't catch that. That means that he will exceed my expectations. No, he tells me that he will do abundantly. I have come that you may have life and have it more. See, for you to be living, you're just doing all right. But I don't want to just live. I want to live in the overflow. I don't want to just live. I want to live in abundance. I don't want to just live, but I want to experience breakthrough in my life. So when he uses the phrase, strike the ground, it's not as if he's taking arrows and knocking it on the ground. If you look at it in the natural, that's what it seems like he's saying. But what he's really telling, what he's really telling Joash, strike the ground means every time you shoot the arrow over to your enemy's camp, it should hit the ground. And the Bible says that he, he must have had at least five arrows. He must have had at least six arrows. But he only struck the ground three times. My God, my God, my God. If God has given me five or six arrows, I'm going to use every arrow I got to make sure that the enemy that's coming against me that he ain't gonna I ain't gonna have to see him no more so I ain't just trying to knock it down I'm trying to take you out I told you last week that David didn't settle with just knocking Goliath down but David took the sword and said, no, I got to cut this joker head off. I need to know that it's dead for real. I ain't going to fight this giant again. He may got other brothers, but Goliath, you dead. And I come to tell you that you need to take your faith to another level. You need to stop settling for what life is throwing at you. And you need to take that bow. And you need to shoot every arrow that God has given you to take out that enemy that's coming against you. See, if he only shot one arrow. Hey, God, he would have already guaranteed victory. See, the prophet told him that you're going to have victory. So even if he only shot one arrow, he would have already fulfilled the word. The word would have been fulfilled what the prophet told him. But the number of times and the number of arrows that 
the prophet shot determined how many victories God was going to give him. And I'm coming to tell you that I want all of my victories. I don't want just one or two victories. I want victory over poverty. I want victory over everything else. You, you name your victory. I, I was going to get a bow and arrow and invite some of you up here to just shoot your arrow. And I ain't going to just shoot my shot. I'm going to shoot all of my shots. I ain't going to just shoot my best shot. I'm going to shoot every shot I have. And if I had a gun, I'm going I'm to empty the clip on you. I'm going to make sure you ain't getting up. And some of you by faith need to know you need to exercise your faith and you need to empty the clip on them demons that's trying to attack you at night. Oh, God. You need to empty the clip on those, those generational curses. It took mama out, but it ain't going to take me out. It tried to take my auntie out, but it ain't going to take me out. Oh, Sunday, boys. I, I just heard somebody say, oh, God. Somebody in here, you've been worrying. Ah, thank you, Holy Ghost. I, I heard the Holy Ghost. You've been worrying because you had a family member to die of a certain disorder when they got a certain age. And you ain't got there yet, but deep down in your mind, you've been saying to yourself, Lord, I hope, I hope it ain't going to take me out. You know, daddy had cancer when he was 40, and you know, auntie had this sis on her. Somebody need to use your faith. <laughs> and you say, no weapon formed against me ain't going to be able to prosper. Them. You can say, hey, a thousand may fall at my side and 10,000 may fall at my right hand, but it ain't going to come near me. Some of you can't even trust anymore and have a relationship because you're worried about mama and daddy had a divorce. But you need to speak over your life. I ain't going to worry about that because I'm going to keep my man and I'm going to keep my woman and I don't care what they did. It ain't going to happen to me. So I killed that lie. I emptied the clip on that lie that the enemy been trying to tell me. Hallelujah. arrows i'm closing it represents huh, y'all gotta catch it y'all i wish i could oh gosh the arrows elder represents our expectations my god that means that joe's expectations were too few and too little but I want to maximize. Oh, that's a word for somebody. You need to maximize your expectations. I expect everything that God said to come to pass. See, Joash's expectations were too low. And when you have divided faith, you will suffer from low expectations. Low expectations is a result of divided faith. But when you have wholehearted faith in God, then your expectations shall be high because you know the God that you depend on. You know the God that you trust in. You know that whatever word he said is going to come to pass. You know if God says that I'll never leave you nor forsake you, that he's going to be there for you. You know if God says that he's going to bring you out, that he's going to bring you out. But when we have high expectations, people of God, we release God's ultimate power. When you sell yourself, when you... When you sell yourself short, you, what you end up doing, you end up diminishing the power that God can release in your life. Matthew 9 and 29 tells us, Jesus touched the eyes of two blind men. And listen what he said to him, Charles. He said, according to your faith, According to your faith, 
let it be to you. And the Bible says that after Joash had shot his three arrows, he thought he was doing something. He was like, oh, man, I got it. It says, Elijah, watch this, the man of God was angry. Why are you angry, Elijah? Well, the Bible don't tell us this, but if I could put myself in Elijah's shoe, I would be angry because here I am on my last, on my deathbed. Here I am, having done what God has called me to do. And you come, and I try to help you out. And you wasting my time because you won't walk in the full potential that God. If I'm going to prophesy, if, if this is going to be the last time I prophesy, then I want to prophesy to somebody. That's going to take me at the word and that will do fully. I don't want to waste my last prophecy on someone that's going to sell themselves short. <laughs> Come on. I, I, I'm not going to waste my last breath. and I, I, I'm struggling to breathe. I'm not going to waste my last breath on someone that won't take God. And his word. So I, I, I've given you enough word. I've released enough anointing for you to never fight the enemy again. But because you had low expectations. But because you, you sold yourself too short. You could not experience the fullness. And I, and I look at Elijah as a father and I thought about God. And I said, God, I repent for every blessing that I prayed for you to give me, and I mishandled it. <laughs> Help me, God. Lord, I repent <laughs> of taking your grace for granted. Lord, I, I, I repent for coming into your house Closing my mouth and not giving you the praise that's due unto your name. When you said you could even make the rocks cry out to me. Lord, I repent for not being all that you said I could be. Lord, I repent for not trusting you with every moment and every second of my life that I should have trusted you with. People of God, when God invites you, to take something by faith. We must receive it wholly. We must receive it boldly. And we must receive it knowing that he is a great giver and he's the great king. Don't take his grace for granted. Don't take his gift for granted. Watch this. And don't sell yourself short. Because God has more for you. And, and listen, I hope y'all caught this. Those all right days are over with. So when Pastor call you say, hey, Latoria, how you doing today? I don't want to hear all right. I'm doing great. I'm doing abundance. Deidre, how you doing today? <laughs> Kayla, how you doing today? I'm doing more than all right. Because those all right days are over. Now, here's where I close. Give me something softly. I want to close like this. Everyone standing. I want you to catch this. Last thing I'm going to say. <laughs> I told you earlier that it's a danger to put more faith in the man than we do in God. So, you know what God did for Joash? I could imagine after Elijah being upset with him, he probably thought, man, well, I don't know what to do now. We ain't got but three victories. And, and, and the Lord performed his word according to his faith. 
Joash defeated his enemy three times. But he could have just taken them out. They would have never had to fight again. Now his children and children, 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 children got to fight an enemy that he could have killed a long time ago. But he sold himself short. But watch this. The Bible says in this same chapter, watch this. The Bible said in the same chapter that Elijah died. <laughs> I thank you, Holy Spirit. Elijah died. And unlike his spiritual father, Eli Elisha died. Unlike his spiritual father, Elijah. Remember, he didn't die. He was caught up in a, in a chariot. Elisha was actually buried. And here's one of the reasons why I believe that the Lord allowed him to be buried, elder. The Bible says that several days later, there were people, another man, they, was, they were doing a committal service. In other words, they were, in, they were in the graveyard where Elijah's body was laid. And they were doing a committal service. And the armies from the Moab began to invade the people. So in other words, they interrupted the committal service of a man that was dead. And while the people got in a hurry, they took the man that was dead and they put him in Elisha's grave. And something happened, y'all. The man that was dead came alive. When he touched Elisha's grave. And I believe that what God was saying to Joash and what God is saying to you today. The man of God, the prophet may be dead. But Jehovah God, <laughs> I'm still alive. <laughs> People you trusted in may have died. People you depended on may have gone on. People that led you to the Lord may have gone on. There's going to be a day when Grandma and, and everybody, there's going to be a day when Pastor Matt leaves on. But guess what? The God of Pastor Matt will still be alive. And he's alive and well to let you know that, hey, you ain't got to settle. You ain't got to sell yourself short. You ain't got to shortchange yourself anymore. Because I'm a God of abundance. I'm a God of overflow, and I'm a God of victory for you today. Hallelujah. Come on, let's receive that today. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise.